In communications and electronic engineering, a transmission line is a specialized cable or other structure designed to conduct alternating current of radio frequency, that is, currents with a frequency high enough that their wave nature must be taken into account. Transmission lines are used for purposes such as connecting radio transmitters and receivers with their antennas they are then called feed lines or feeders, distributing cable television signals, trunk lines routing calls between telephone switching centers, computer network connections and high-speed computer data buses. This article covers two conductor transmission line such as parallel line, ladder line, coaxial cable, striplin, and microstrip. Some sources also refer to waveguide, dielectric waveguide, and even optical fiber as transmission line, however these lines require different analytical techniques and so are not covered by this article, see waveguide electromagnetism. <inaudible> <inaudible> Overview Ordinary electrical cables suffice to carry low-frequency alternating current AC, such as mains power, which reverses direction 100 to 120 times per second, and audio signals. However, they cannot be used to carry currents in the radio frequency range, above about 30 kHz, because the energy tends to radiate off the cable as radio waves, causing power losses. Radio frequency currents also tend to reflect from discontinuities in the cable such as connectors and joints, and travel back down the cable toward the source. These reflections act as bottlenecks, preventing the signal power from reaching the destination. Transmission lines use specialized construction, and impedance matching, to carry electromagnetic signals with minimal reflections and power losses. The distinguishing feature of most transmission lines is that they have uniform cross-sectional dimensions along their length, giving them a uniform impedance, called the characteristic impedance, to prevent reflections. Types of transmission line include parallel line, ladder line twisted pair, coaxial cable, and planar transmission lines such as striplin and microstrip. The higher the frequency of electromagnetic waves moving through a given cable or medium, the shorter the wavelength of the waves. Transmission lines become necessary when the transmitted frequency's wavelength is sufficiently short that the length of the cable becomes a significant part of a wavelength. At microwave frequencies and above, power losses in transmission lines become excessive, and waveguides are used instead, which function as pipes to confine and guide the electromagnetic waves. Some sources define waveguides as a type of transmission line, however, this article will not include them. At even higher frequencies, in the terahertz, infrared and visible ranges, waveguides in turn become lossy, and optical methods, such as lenses and mirrors, are used to guide electromagnetic waves. The theory of sound wave propagation is very similar mathematically to that of electromagnetic waves, so techniques from transmission line theory are also used to build structures to conduct acoustic waves, and these are called acoustic transmission lines. History Mathematical analysis of the behavior of electrical transmission lines grew out of the work of James Clerk Maxwell, Lord Kelvin and Oliver Heaviside. In 1855 Lord Kelvin formulated a diffusion model of the current in a submarine cable. The model correctly predicted the poor performance of the 1858 trans-Atlantic submarine telegraph cable. In 1885 Heaviside published the first papers that described his analysis of propagation in cables and the modern form of the telegrapher's equations. Applicability <inaudible> 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 In many electric circuits, the length of the wires connecting the components can for the most part be ignored. That is, the voltage on the wire at a given time can be assumed to be the same at all points. 
However, when the voltage changes in a time interval comparable to the time it takes for the signal to travel down the wire, the length becomes important and the wire must be treated as a transmission line. Stated another way, the length of the wire is important when the signal includes frequency components with corresponding wavelengths comparable to or less than the length of the wire. A common rule of thumb is that the cable or wire should be treated as a transmission line if the length is greater than one-tenth of the wavelength. At this length the phase delay and the interference of any reflections on the line become important and can lead to unpredictable behavior in systems which have not been carefully designed using transmission line theory. The four-terminal model For the purposes of analysis, an electrical transmission line can be modeled as a two-port network also called a quadrupole, as follows In the simplest case, the network is assumed to be linear i.e. the complex voltage across either port is proportional to the complex current flowing into it when there are no reflections, and the two ports are assumed to be interchangeable. If the transmission line is uniform along its length, then its behavior is largely described by a single parameter called the characteristic impedance, symbol Z0. This is the ratio of the complex voltage of a given wave to the complex current of the same wave at any point on the line. Typical values of Z0 are 50 or 75 ohms for a coaxial cable, about 100 ohms for a twisted pair of wires, and about 300 ohms for a common type of untwisted pair used in radio transmission. When sending power down a transmission line, it is usually desirable that as much power as possible will be absorbed by the load and as little as possible will be reflected back to the source. This can be ensured by making the load impedance equal to Z0, in which case the transmission line is said to be matched. Some of the power that is fed into a transmission line is lost because of its resistance. This effect is called ohmic or resistive loss see ohmic heating. At high frequencies, another effect called dielectric loss becomes significant, adding to the losses caused by resistance. Dielectric loss is caused when the insulating material inside the transmission line absorbs energy from the alternating electric field and converts it to heat see dielectric heating. The transmission line is modeled with a resistance R and inductance L in series with a capacitance C and conductance G in parallel. The resistance and conductance contribute to the loss in a transmission line. The total loss of power in a transmission line is often specified in decibels per meter, decibel per meter and usually depends on the frequency of the signal. The manufacturer often supplies a chart showing the loss in decibel per meter at a range of frequencies. A loss of 3 decibels corresponds approximately to a halving of the power. High frequency transmission lines can be defined as those designed to carry electromagnetic waves whose wavelengths are shorter than or comparable to the length of the line. Under these conditions, the approximations useful for calculations at lower frequencies are no longer accurate. This often occurs with radio, microwave and optical signals, metal mesh optical filters, and with the signals found in high speed digital circuits. Topic. Telegrapher's equations The telegrapher's equations, or just telegraph equations are a pair of linear differential equations which describe the voltage V and current I on an electrical transmission line with distance and time. They were developed by Oliver Heaviside who created the transmission line model, and are based on Maxwell's equations. The transmission line model is an example of the distributed element model. It represents the transmission line as an infinite series of two port elementary components, each representing an infinitesimally short segment of the transmission line. The distributed resistance R 
display style R of the conductors is represented by a series resistor expressed in ohms per unit length. The distributed inductance L display style L due to the magnetic field around the wires, self-inductance, etc. is represented by a series inductor in onries per unit length. The capacitance C display style C between the two conductors is represented by a shunt capacitor in farads per unit length. The conductance G display style G of the dielectric material separating the two conductors is represented by a shunt resistor between the signal wire and the return wire in Siemens per unit length. The model consists of an infinite series of the elements shown in the figure, and the values of the components are specified per unit length so the picture of the component can be misleading. R display style R L display style L C display style C and G display style G may also be functions of frequency an alternative notation is to use R display style R L display style L C display style C and G display style G to emphasize that the values are derivatives with respect to length these quantities can also be known as the primary line constants to distinguish from the secondary line constants derived from them these being the propagation constant attenuation constant and phase constant the line voltage V X display style V X and the current i x display style i x can be expressed in the frequency domain as v x x equals minus r plus j omega l i x Display style frac partial v x partial x equals r plus j omega l i x i x x equals minus g plus j omega c v x Display style frac partial i x partial x equals g plus j omega c v x tilde. Topic: Special case of a lossless line. When the elements r display style r and g display style g a negligibly small the transmission line is considered as a lossless structure. In this hypothetical case, the model depends only on the L and C elements which greatly simplifies the analysis. For a lossless transmission line, the second-order steady-state telegrapher's equations are 2 v x x 2 plus omega 2 l c v x equals 0 Display style frac partial carrot two V x partial x carrot two plus omega carrot two L C V x equals zero two I x x two plus omega two 
l c i x equals 0 display style frac partial caret 2 i x partial x caret 2 plus omega caret 2 l c i x equals 0 tilde these are wave equations which have plane waves with equal propagation speed in the forward and reverse directions as solutions. The physical significance of this is that electromagnetic waves propagate down transmission lines and in general, there is a reflected component that interferes with the original signal. These equations are fundamental to transmission line theory. General case of a line with losses In the general case the loss terms R and G are both included, and the full form of the telegrapher's equations become 2 V X X Two equals gamma two v x display style frac partial caret two v x partial x caret two equals gamma caret two v x two i x x two equals gamma Two I x display style frac partial carrot two I x partial x carrot two equals gamma carrot two I x where gamma display style gamma is the complex propagation constant. These equations are fundamental to transmission line theory. They are also wave equations, and have solutions similar to the special case, but which are a mixture of sines and cosines with exponential decay factors. Solving for the propagation constant gamma in terms of the primary parameters r l g display style g and c display style c gives gamma equals r plus j omega l g plus j omega c Display style gamma equals sqrt r plus j omega l g plus j omega c, and the characteristic impedance can be expressed as z zero equals r plus j omega l g plus j Omega C display style z underscore zero equals sqrt frac r plus j omega l g plus j omega c tilde. The solutions for v x display style v x and i x display style i x V x equals V plus E minus gamma x plus V minus E plus gamma x Display style v x equals v underscore plus e caret gamma x plus v underscore e caret plus gamma x i x equals one 
Z zero V plus E minus Gamma X minus V minus E plus Gamma X Display style I x equals frac one Z underscore zero left V underscore plus E carrot gamma x V underscore E carrot plus gamma x right tilde The constants V plus or minus Display style V underscore PM must be determined from boundary conditions. For a voltage pulse V I N T display style V underscore mathrm in T starting at X equals zero display style X equals zero and moving in the positive X display style X direction then the transmitted pulse V O U T X T displaystyle V underscore mathrm out X T at position X displaystyle X can be obtained by computing the Fourier transform V tilde Omega Display style tilde v omega of v i n t display style v underscore mathrm in t attenuating each frequency component by e minus re gamma x Display style e caret operator name re gamma x advancing its phase by minus m gamma x display style operator name m gamma x and taking the inverse Fourier transform the real and imaginary parts of gamma display style gamma can be computed as re gamma equals alpha equals a 2 plus b 2 1 4 cos psi Display style operator name re gamma equals alpha equals a carrot two plus b carrot two carrot one quarter cos psi m gamma equals beta equals a two plus b two one four sin Psi display style operator name m gamma equals beta equals a carrot two plus b carrot two carrot one quarter sin psi with a r g minus omega two l c equals omega two L C R Omega L G Omega C minus one Display style a tilde equivalent tilde R G Omega carrot two L C tilde equals tilde Omega carrot two L C left left frac R Omega L right left frac G Omega C right minus one right B Omega C R plus 
omega l g equals omega 2 l c r omega l plus g omega c Display style B tilde equivalent tilde Omega C R plus Omega L G tilde equals tilde Omega carrot two L C left frac R Omega L plus frac G Omega C right The right hand expressions holding when neither L Display style L nor C Display style C nor omega display style omega is zero and with psi one two at and two b a display style psi tilde equivalent tilde tfrac one two operator name at and two b a where at and two is the everywhere defined form of two-parameter arctangent function, with arbitrary value zero when both arguments are zero. Topic: <laughs> Special low-loss case. For small losses and high frequencies, the general equations can be simplified if r omega l one display style tfrac r omega l l one and g omega c one display style tfrac g omega c l one then re gamma equals alpha approximately equals 1 2 l c r l plus g c display style operator name re gamma equals alpha approx tfrac 1 2 sqrt l c left frac r l plus frac g c right M gamma equals beta approximately equals omega l c display style operator name m gamma equals beta approx omega sqrt l c tilde noting that an advance in phase by minus omega Delta display style omega delta is equivalent to a time delay by delta display style delta v o u t t display style v underscore out t can be simply computed as v o U T X T approximately equals V I N T minus L C X E minus one two L C R L plus G C X Display style V underscore Mathram out X T approx V underscore Mathram in T SQRT L C X E carrot TFRAC one two SQRT L C left frac R L plus frac G C right X Topic: Heavy side condition. 
The heaviside condition is a special case where the wave travels down the line without any dispersion distortion. The condition for this to take place is G C equals R L display style frac G C equals frac R L topic Input impedance of transmission line The characteristic impedance Z zero Display style Z underscore zero of a transmission line is the ratio of the amplitude of a single voltage wave to its current wave. Since most transmission lines also have a reflected wave, the characteristic impedance is generally not the impedance that is measured on the line. The impedance measured at a given distance L from the load impedance Z L may be expressed as Z I N equals V I equals Z zero one plus gamma L E minus two gamma one minus gamma L E minus two gamma Display style Z underscore mathram in left L right equals frac V L I L equals Z underscore zero frac one plus mathet gamma underscore mathram L E carrot minus two gamma L one mathet gamma underscore mathram L E carrot minus two gamma L where Gamma display style gamma is the propagation constant and gamma l equals z l minus z zero z l plus z zero Display style mathet gamma underscore mathram L equals frac Z underscore mathram L Z underscore zero Z underscore mathram L plus Z underscore zero is the voltage reflection coefficient measured at the load end of the transmission line. Alternatively, the above formula can be rearranged to express the input impedance in terms of the load impedance rather than the load voltage reflection coefficient. Z I N equals Z zero Z L plus Z zero than Gamma Z zero plus Z L than Gamma Display style Z underscore mathram in L equals Z underscore zero frac Z underscore mathram L plus Z underscore zero than left gamma L right Z underscore zero plus Z underscore mathram L than left gamma L right. Topic Input impedance of lossless transmission line. For a lossless transmission line, the propagation constant is purely imaginary. Gamma equals J beta. Display style gamma equals J beta. So the above formulas can be rewritten as Z i n equals Z zero. Z L plus J 
Z zero tan beta Z zero plus J Z L tan beta Display style Z underscore mathram in L equals Z underscore zero frac Z underscore mathram L plus J Z underscore zero tan beta L Z underscore zero plus J Z underscore mathram L tan beta L where beta equals two pi lambda Display style beta equals frac two pi lambda is the wave number. In calculating beta, display style beta, the wavelength is generally different inside the transmission line to what it would be in free space. Consequently, the velocity constant of the material the transmission line is made of needs to be taken into account when doing such a calculation. Topic: Special cases of lossless transmission lines. Topic: <laughs> Half wavelength. For the special case where beta equals n pi, display style beta l equals n pi where n is an integer meaning that the length of the line is a multiple of half a wavelength the expression reduces to the load impedance so that z i n equals z l display style z underscore mathrm in equals z underscore mathrm l for all n display style n this includes the case when n equals 0 display style n equals 0 meaning that the length of the transmission line is negligibly small compared to the wavelength the physical significance of this is that the transmission line can be ignored ie treated as a wire in either case topic Quarter wavelength For the case where the length of the line is one quarter wavelength long, or an odd multiple of a quarter wavelength long, the input impedance becomes Z I N equals Z zero two Z L Display style z underscore mathrm in equals frac z underscore zero carrot two z underscore mathrm l tilde. Topic: Matched load. Another special case is when the load impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance of the line i.e. the line is matched, in which case the impedance reduces to the characteristic impedance of the line so that Z I N equals Z L equals Z 0 Display style Z underscore mathram in equals Z underscore mathram L equals Z underscore zero for all display style L and all Lambda display style Lambda Topic Short For the case of a shorted load, i.e. Z L equals zero. Display style Z underscore mathram L equals zero. The input impedance is purely imaginary and a periodic function of position and wavelength frequency. Z I 
n equals j z 0 tan beta Display style z underscore mathrm in L equals j z underscore zero tan beta L. Topic open. For the case of an open load, i.e. z L equals infinity. Display style z underscore mathrm l equals inf t. The input impedance is once again imaginary and periodic. Z i n equals minus j z zero cot beta. Display style z underscore mathrm in L equals j z underscore zero cot beta L. Topic: Stepped transmission line. A stepped transmission line is used for broad range impedance matching. It can be considered as multiple transmission line segments connected in series, with the characteristic impedance of each individual element to be Z 0 I 0 I. The input impedance can be obtained from the successive application of the chain relation Z I plus one equals Z zero I Z I plus J Z zero I tan beta I I Z zero plus j z i tan beta i Display style z underscore mathrm i plus one equals z underscore mathrm zero i frac z underscore mathrm i plus j z underscore mathrm zero i Tan beta underscore mathrm i l underscore mathrm i z underscore mathrm zero i plus j z underscore mathrm i tan beta underscore mathrm i l underscore mathrm i where beta i display style beta underscore mathrm i is the wave number of the i display style mathrm i Th transmission line segment and I display style l underscore mathrm I is the length of this segment and Z I display style Z underscore mathrm I is the front end impedance that loads the I display style mathrm I Th segment. Because the characteristic impedance of each transmission line segment Z zero I display style Z underscore mathrm zero I is often different from that of the input cable Z zero display style Z underscore zero the impedance transformation circle is off centered along the X display style X axis of the Smith chart whose impedance representation is usually normalized against Z zero display style Z underscore zero. The stepped transmission line is an example of a distributed element circuit. A large variety of other circuits can also be constructed with transmission lines including filters, power dividers and directional couplers. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Practical types. Topic: <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Coaxial cable. Coaxial lines can find virtually all of the electromagnetic wave to the area inside the cable. Coaxial lines can therefore be bent and twisted subject to limits without negative effects, and they can be strapped to conductive supports without inducing unwanted currents in them. In radio frequency applications up to a few gigahertz, the wave propagates in the transverse electric and magnetic mode only, which means that the electric and magnetic fields are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation the electric field is radial, and the magnetic field is circumferential. However, at frequencies for which the wavelength in the dielectric is significantly shorter than the circumference of the cable other transverse modes can propagate. These modes are classified into two groups, transverse electric and transverse magnetic trademark waveguide modes. When more than one mode can exist, bends and other irregularities in the cable geometry can cause power to be transferred from one mode to another. The most common use for coaxial cables is for television and other signals with bandwidth of multiple megahertz. In the middle 20th century they carried long-distance telephone connections. Planar lines Microstrip A microstrip circuit uses a thin flat conductor which is parallel to a ground plane. Microstrip can be made by having a strip of copper on one side of a printed circuit board PCB or ceramic substrate while the other side is a continuous ground plane. The width of the strip, the thickness of the insulating layer PCB or ceramic and the dielectric constant of the insulating layer determine the characteristic impedance. Microstrip is an open structure whereas coaxial cable is a closed structure. Striplin A striplin circuit uses a flat strip of metal which is sandwiched between two parallel ground planes. The insulating material of the substrate forms a dielectric. The width of the strip, the thickness of the substrate and the relative permittivity of the substrate determine the characteristic impedance of the strip which is a transmission line. Coplanar waveguide A coplanar waveguide consists of a center strip and two adjacent outer conductors, all three of them flat structures that are deposited onto the same insulating substrate and thus are located in the same plane. Coplanar. The width of the center conductor, the distance between inner and outer conductors, and the relative permittivity of the substrate determine the characteristic impedance of the coplanar transmission line. <laughs> Balanced lines A balanced line is a transmission line consisting of two conductors of the same type, and equal impedance to ground and other circuits. There are many formats of balanced lines, amongst the most common are twisted pair, star quad and twin lead. <laughs> twisted pair Twisted pairs are commonly used for terrestrial telephone communications. In such cables, many pairs are grouped together in a single cable, from two to several thousand. The format is also used for data network distribution inside buildings, but the cable is more expensive because the transmission line parameters are tightly controlled. Star quad. Star quad is a four-conductor cable in which all four conductors are twisted together around the cable axis. It is sometimes used for two circuits, such as four-wire telephony and other telecommunications applications. In this configuration each pair uses two non-adjacent conductors. Other times it is used for a single, balanced line, such as audio applications and two-wire telephony. 
In this configuration two non-adjacent conductors are terminated together at both ends of the cable, and the other two conductors are also terminated together. When used for two circuits, crosstorque is reduced relative to cables with two separate twisted pairs. When used for a single, balanced line, magnetic interference picked up by the cable arrives as a virtually perfect common mode signal, which is easily removed by coupling transformers. The combined benefits of twisting, balanced signaling, and quadrupole pattern give outstanding noise immunity, especially advantageous for low signal level applications such as microphone cables, even when installed very close to a power cable. The disadvantage is that StarQuad, in combining two conductors, typically has double the capacitance of similar two-conductor twisted and shielded audio cable. High capacitance causes increasing distortion and greater loss of high frequencies as distance increases. <laughs> Twin LED Twin lead consists of a pair of conductors held apart by a continuous insulator. By holding the conductors a known distance apart, the geometry is fixed and the line characteristics are reliably consistent. It is lower loss than coaxial cable because the wave propagates mostly in air rather than the thin dielectric. However, it is more susceptible to interference. Topic. Lecher lines Lecher lines are a form of parallel conductor that can be used at UHF for creating resonant circuits. They are a convenient practical format that fills the gap between lumped components used at HF, VHF, and resonant cavities used at UHF, SHF. Single wire line Unbalanced lines were formerly much used for telegraph transmission, but this form of communication has now fallen into disuse. Cables are similar to twisted pair in that many cores are bundled into the same cable but only one conductor is provided per circuit and there is no twisting. All the circuits on the same route use a common path for the return current earth return. There is a power transmission version of single wire earth return in use in many locations. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> General applications. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Signal transfer. Electrical transmission lines are very widely used to transmit high-frequency signals over long or short distances with minimum power loss. One familiar example is the down lead from a TV or radio aerial to the receiver. <laughs> Pulse generation Transmission lines are also used as pulse generators. By charging the transmission line and then discharging it into a resistive load, a rectangular pulse equal in length to twice the electrical length of the line can be obtained, although with half the voltage. A Blumlin transmission line is a related pulse forming device that overcomes this limitation. These are sometimes used as the pulsed power sources for radar transmitters and other devices. Topic. Stub filters If a short-circuited or open-circuited transmission line is wired in parallel with a line used to transfer signals from point A to point B, then it will function as a filter. The method for making stubs is similar to the method for using Lecher lines for crude frequency measurement, but it is working backwards. One method recommended in the RSGB's radio communication handbook is to take an open-circuited length of transmission line wired in parallel with the feeder delivering signals from an aerial. By cutting the free end of the transmission line, a minimum in the strength of the signal observed at a receiver can be found. 
At this stage the stub filter will reject this frequency and the odd harmonics, but if the free end of the stub is shorted then the stub will become a filter rejecting the even harmonics. Acoustic transmission lines An acoustic transmission line is the acoustic analog of the electrical transmission line as a waveguide. It is typically imagined as a rigid walled tube that is long and thin relative to the wavelength of sound present in it. See also Artificial transmission line Longitudinal electromagnetic wave Propagation velocity Radio frequency power transmission Time domain reflectometer <laughs>